So going back about 10 years when I was in my early 20s and I used to sell machine tools, I would always go in machine shops and find loads of vertical machining centres, three axis milling machines, and the, and the turning centres were really for turning, the sliding head lathes were for turning. That's very, very different these days. I'm at Quantum Precision in Birmingham. I'm with John O'Brien. John, you're um, a story which, which really uh, showcases that, aren't you? Can, you? can you tell us about some of the parts that you got here, these two parts, and the fact that now you don't do them on milling machines anymore, do you? No. Um the stars can pretty much almost do anything. This used to be made out of billets and used to take weeks to do a, a run of 500. You constantly turn in each face round. Is that how you did it? So you had a machining centre, you had lots of vices and you just maybe do op ones, like 15 to 20 op ones and then turn them all over to op two. Did, did you yeah. used to do it like that? Literally like that. Is you line them all up and you set it in the jig, press start and you're doing 12 at a time. It used to take ages to do 500. Each did you scrap many as well doing it like that? Just because of the, you know, to, you rely heavily on the operator there to, to move the part around? The error was within the, the billets that come in, so what, if one was out, it would come out, but now it's done on the star and you never get a problem. You press the button and, and just walk away. Have, away. Has it changed the way you think when a, when a part comes in? Do you go around looking at the mills thinking, actually, I, I can do that more efficiently here on this sliding head lay? Yeah, because we've been able to do that out of a round bar. So then when this one come up, weren't really going to go on the star because we know we can mill anything pretty much. Um, and this is a good example as well because you've got lots of holes here that are sort of off centre, they're off centre line and again if you were having to fixture that up, I mean you'd have to do some turning operation there anyway to do the thread wouldn't you? Mm, but now it's just one hit. So one now you can come in and turn that, roughly what would be the cycle time on, on this, let's take that part as an example, bearing in mind there's quite a lot of features on, on all sides. I think it was about five minutes in total to do all of it, one go. And before on the machining centre, do you know how, how efficient it was on there? Ah, oh, it took forever. You could turn it around in the jig again. You'd have to clock every side, set every side. Yeah, and, and again, you, you couldn't be reliant on the accuracy of the component really, that could you? Because all the, the holes are lined up with other features. If you get the wrong side, you just ruin the whole. And when you, when you, do you ever have any problems with things like swarf build-up on machining long runs on parts like these? We talk about the advantages of bringing it onto this machine, but are there any disadvantages, swarf build-up, damaging the part when it comes out of the parts, catch of the threads, anything like that? The damage, not so much, because you can, ain't got far to shoot out and it's quite slow. Um, you don't generally have a problem. So you've expanded your sliding head lathes now. How many have you got from Star? About 11 now. That's a lot. And, and do you go around looking at ways of getting more onto these machines? Because you can just run them, you can press the button and go home, can't you? I'm always trying to find a different, different way of doing something, and if we, if we can put it on a star, saves it on a different machine, you, the cycle times always tend to be better on the star. And did you believe me when I said 10 years ago I was in my early 20s? No. 